something that I've always appreciated about you is your openness to face challenges. And that's often a key factor in deciding whether a project is worth exploring. What was the origin story of how the 25th annual Putnam County Spelly Bee came across your desk? And what specific challenge were you hoping to tackle with this role? Um, well, thanks for saying that. I, I do think that is generally the the main component behind deciding to do something is if it scares the shit out of me a little bit I'm like oh I guess I have to do that then uh fine um theater has always been something that has really scared me and I know that's to some people surprising because I come from a tv show that where I was surrounded by musical theater pros and they've all been trying to get me to do it for a very long time. And over the past sort of year and a half, there's been so many like randomly out of left field theater things that have come up and like been circling. Nothing had ever worked out until this. And also this, uh, this show is just so special. And so many people love it, myself included. And I think for me doing something that was comedic and heartfelt um, and also, it's just so good. It's definitely like my brand of musical theater, like what I enjoy most. Um, and so I was just very, very lucky that they were just doing this for a couple days in DC and that I, I get to be a part of it. I feel like you were, you were made for this stage. I got to see the Glee live tour and you and Amber Riley <sighs> oh my on God. that stage. <laughs> showstoppers and you know your character in this production is known for his magic foot and spelling out words on the floor first having had such an illustrious tenure and diverse career in this industry have you developed your any unique technique or approaches that have influenced your work across the various facets of your talent um i don't know if it, it's not necessarily any technique or anything but i'm i go in like such a fan to all of these things like the first day of glee when amber sang and jenna sang and chris and we all sang for each other it's i think being able to really appreciate like where you are i'm not someone who really thinks ahead very much which probably doesn't serve me in a lot of <laughs> other areas of my life but being fully present and i don't know if this is exactly the answer you're looking for but I found has served me really, really well. Like in this process as well, just of trying to absorb constantly learning. And I think that's the, like the beautiful thing about the challenges of this industry where you can do something that you've never done before so often is that you are, you never stop being a student, even how watching in rehearsals, how people pick up harmonies at different paces and they're tech, like, I'm a nerd in like people's, um, I guess, um, like what they specialize in and how, watching how different people learn and watching where people place different sounds in their face for, when we're talking about musical theater like like you mentioned Amber watching Amber on stage watching how she performs is a gift and all those things I think somehow absorb within me and then I see how that applies to me and what I can do and like oh I really like how they do that I really like how that connects with people or you know and I think I'm a pretty good arbiter of sifting through those things and like what feels organic to me and also just enjoying the experience as a fan, even though I'm still a part of it. I think that's so important to be a student of your craft. And if like once you stop learning, like that's a, a sign to like maybe pivot to a new career path. You know, this is yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah. This and, like, also and watching people be really good at something makes me want to learn more. Like, I think there's the dual edge of like, oh God, I'm out of my depth. Like, I feel like I'm in, I've been turned to the deep end of this thing, but also, oh my God, look how good these other people are at this. Like, that is amazing. What can I do to like, even remotely get within the same playing field as them? You're also very self-deprecating. I don't think you give yourself <laughs> enough credit for the talent that you bring to this as well. And this is also really such a fast turnaround from rehearsals to now opening night, which I think works well in this situation with these cast of characters. Mm -hmm. How does that fast-paced environment push you creatively? And given the demanding schedule you experience on Glee, would you say this process has been more or less grueling? I think Glee is a perfect training ground for this. And I yeah. think for most things, when we were on it and you could ask any one of us, the crew would tell us all the time, nothing you do will be as hard as this ever. Um, 
don't know if that's necessarily true. Everything has its own unique set of challenges, but I think you're completely right where this show, I think, is ideal for this sort of format. Putting a show together in 11, 12 days of rehearsal is crazy, but if you are going to do it, I think this show is perfect for it. I don't know how, they've done other productions like Spam a Lot and Bye Bye Birdie where there's set changes and costume changes and we don't have that, you know, like it's the same yeah. set, there's no costume changes um, and it's 90 minutes. So it's it's a quick thing and it's just, it's timing and jokes. It has been hard. Um, like I said, I, this is newer for me. Like I'm newer to this and like learning that quickly with Glee, yes, it was very fast and we had to sing and film and do dance rehearsal, but you get multiple takes, you get multiple tries. There's an mm -hmm. editor making everybody look good. So you're protected. So in that sort of space, like it, you can be a little rough around the edges because hopefully the vehicle behind it will make you look good because they need it to look good because there's been so much money put into it. The stage, there's nobody to protect you. It's it's live. You're out there. Um, you protect each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once the lights go down in the house and you're out there, then it's all on all of you. And I think that's the magic of theater mm -hmm. in general, where it always feels like the little engine that could, because it's sort of a miracle every single time that all those moving pieces come together and. Hopefully we've done enough where they all come together on this. But I will say that having Danny, who's the director, set sort of this perfect balance of play and everybody is contributing, everybody's opinions and thoughts are welcome. Plus he knew exactly what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think if you go into a 12 day rehearsal process, you have to have somebody at the top who knows exactly what they want. And I think it was also very surprising that somebody like that, even within this short time, was so collaborative. It was wonderful. It, like, it's just been such a great creative process, even though going into it, it seemed very, very daunting. I think one of the beautiful things about theater is that every performance is going to be unique to that audience. And you also have mm -hmm. experience directing different music videos. Have you found that the work that you've now done behind the cameras influenced the way that you approach your work on screen and on the stage? I think a little bit, yeah. I, I think if anything, what I pay attention to is how a director works. Um, because I was never really interested in that at all during the Glee days and all of that. It really scared me. I couldn't even wrap my head around it. Having done a little bit of it, um, I, I have been like really fascinated to see like how Danny works, like what he, how he does try things or like, let's just, I think communication um, and the communication skills or different communication styles is a really hard thing to navigate when directing or being the leader in any sort, sort of situation and seeing people who are really effective communicators I think is um, like such an insight into how to be a great director. And Danny is one of those people where it's like, how are you able to set sort of structure and also set time for like creativity and joy and laughter and to have that free time in there to play around and mess around. And so that what I enjoy, it's not necessarily like, what would I do in this instance? It's like, how, like, what do I like? as an actor, like what I was saying earlier about like picking up things from other people, yeah. seeing how Danny communicates with us and with all the different departments is absolutely something that I was clocking and have been clocking the entire time of like that. This is super, super effective. And he's just like super kind and everybody then wants to work harder for somebody like that. And you trust in them. Um, and I think that's what I've been noticing the most from that standpoint. Isn't it interesting how that industry has shifted so much where like in the past, if you were an actor, you just needed to solely be an actor. Now you mm -hmm. have to be like this multifaceted talent, mm -hmm. which I think lends itself to all the different disciplines that you'll Definitely. have to explore. And you, yeah. you're really 
Benjamin Buttoning with the characters that you play. They also <laughs> feel like there's a level of freedom that comes with portraying this particular age group where they're not yet jaded by the world. How does that freedom allow you to take more risk in your performances? Your questions are very, very good. I just want yeah. to say, like, the very, because that was pretty early on. There was, a, there's, I mean, it's still early on. This whole thing, it's going to be still be early <laughs> on when it's over. Um, but there was a discussion there. Me and Nina, who plays all of Ostrowski, and Danny had, did have a discussion about something in the show about like our reactions to things. And it is that thing where we do have to remind ourselves, like, these are middle schooler and elementary yeah. school students where you're not going to have the jadedness of life or any life experience really at all. And so to remove that from what you're doing and not letting any of that really inform what you're doing is sort of hard. And every day sort of has been a process and learning to like, don't overthink this because the special thing about kids in this way is that a lot of what they're experiencing they're experiencing for the first time yeah. and they don't have all the mechanisms for better or for worse to gauge their reactions in the moment and especially in a show like this where everybody is just sort of like looking for their place in the world and connection and to be able to just be present and find that connection and like the part of the show where there is the crowd participation so every show will be different I think helps you not be overly analyzing what's going on and helps you stay present which I think helps then be more childlike and yeah just be reacting to what's going on because it is hard to like take yourself out of like me as a 36 year old why is this kid reacting that's like shut up Kevin it's not no he's just he's like 12 <laughs> like yeah. be be cool and this is also such an interesting role because so many audience members will come in with a background about the production and your character. I don't remember you being a huge musical theater fan during your Glee days. Has that changed? And how's your version of William uniquely your own? It definitely, my um, <clears throat> musical theater, I guess, the fandom has developed over the years. I think there's no way to be on that show for so long and not garner any sort of appreciation for it. Being surrounded by Jenna and my boyfriend who's been on Broadway, like yeah. they have been teaching me for years now and training me. <laughs> like I, <laughs> the amount of different versions of Alphabuzz I've heard, uh, like I fully know. Um, I had, there was a full week on Stephanie J Block like I have been being taught. Um, and then when it came to this show, this, speaking of Jenna and Austin, like this is also one of their favorite shows ever. And, and I trust them implicitly. I'm like, so if this is one of their favorite yeah. shows and I love this show. Um, I think what is really special about the show is the history of how the show was made. And how unique that each of these characters was almost entirely developed by the original actor who played it. Mm -hmm. And they did that really with that stars in the house did a reunion during the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. And I had seen it then and I watched it again right before we started doing this. And it's just sort of fascinating and a good reminder for me, I think and all of us who are doing this and anyone who does this musical which also has been great to find out how many people have done this musical and like what part they played in college or in high school, um, which makes it more exciting and also more daunting because everybody does have their own version of these characters. Yeah. But I think it was just finding of like, I guess what version of for me is like, I sort of wish I had the ability that William does to sort of say what's on his mind and to be forthright though I think he's doing it as like a defense mechanism because he assumes yeah. nobody likes him and he's pretty abrasive and that's another thing we can unpack in therapy but the the part of him that I think is so admirable is that 
where it's like, what you see is what you get. And I think really leaning into like, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's sort of a bull in a China shop, like, like a cannonball going to like, I know what I like. And I find that really relatable. Like he, he's specific about, I enjoy doing this. I'm here for me. Um, but they all sort of have that in common. And I think when you have characters that are defined as all these characters are being able to not be afraid, like you always want to do something different, obviously, and bring like your personality to it, which will inevitably happen, hopefully. Um, but also the script and the score and how these characters were created were pretty damn perfect. Mm. And like there are structures that are there and they all work for a reason. So it's like finding the nuances and the space in between to play in is fun, but also like we're all relying on the, you know, the original text and things. And like, if it ain't broke, yeah. but obviously like everybody, <laughs> everybody has like a little variation on these things. And it is so fun to see um, those gaps. Like our voices are all different and our mannerisms are all different and we all look different and it's fun to be able to play with all of that because that's sort of all we can use. So much of what you do as a storyteller and artist involves seeing the world through your character's eyes and William, like you were saying, is somebody who's been bullied in the past and really exemplifies that idea of hurt people, hurt people. As an mm -hmm. actor, how did you connect with that part of him and bring his journey to life? I think it's realizing that. I think it's like, he's not mean. None of these people are mean. It's, yeah. it, none, none of it comes from a bad place. It's like, why has he been forced to sort of act like this? Like, why has he adopted these personality traits um, to survive? And they all have. And I think that's like the wonderful part of like, having been rehearsing this now for two weeks and like living with this for two weeks is like, all these characters are so fully developed so quickly. And I think growing up, we are faced with all these different personality types. And then you're like, oh, there's been times when I've acted like this character before. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's probably because I was trying to, you know, be defensive about X, Y, and Z. Um, so I think realizing that he really is there for the purpose of, you know, the spelling bee, like all of them, but... I feel like the real through line of the show is friendship between William and Olive. And like, that's what it is all about. Or you, you go into this chaotic, crazy, rambunctious group of kids and it's laugh, 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 laugh. But really what they all need desperately is friendship and companionship and people recognizing them and acceptance of who they are exactly as they are. And so, you know, it's a microcosm of like what we all need in life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very relatable on that way. And to just see it sort of boiled down into kids who can't regulate <laughs> how they're reacting <laughs> is sort of really <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, you know, outside of this production, you're also the co-host of And That's What You Really Miss. And when you're rewatching this show, especially in the later seasons, it's so clear that many of the reactions to the performances are so genuine and really <laughs> blur that line between character and actor. How have you been able to manage to dial that back for this production, especially when you're working, with, again, with such a stars and a cast? I don't know yet. <laughs> I, I still don't know. We haven't been able to... We've only done a couple like full run throughs and there's been times where I just, I'll look at Beanie or Noah and we're just like, somebody does something so funny. I'm like, I don't know. And mostly, honestly, I'm looking to Taryn in these instances. I'm like, if somebody can survive on Saturday Night Live and like not break character, <laughs> like if anyone yeah. knows how to do it, it's him. And so in moments where... I'm losing it and other people are losing it in rehearsal. I do look to him to see like, what is he doing to stop himself from laughing? Cause like, he's the pro, like this is his bread and butter, a live show. There's, there's improv involved in every single one of our shows because new things are going to be happening. Um, I don't, I honestly, I don't know. That is what I'm most worried about. Cause I do not want to break, but I have yet to go through a rehearsal where I have not broken because 
everybody's so damn funny. I feel like those and getting moments- funnier. It's like yeah. as they're like as we're getting into it too. It's like people are really finding themselves in these characters, and it's just getting funnier. And I'm like, oh, I'm so screwed. I don't know what because I'm on stage the entire time. <laughs> like I'm spoiler <laughs> alert, but I'm there a long time. <laughs> Yeah, but those those are genuine reactions that I feel like on mm-hmm. SNL particularly when people do break. It's such a good reminder that you're all there to have fun and to play yes. in this space together. And we were talking about being a student earlier and how for you it's about finding fulfillment in the work. I know you like to live in the present, but have you started to think forward about what you might take away from this experience? Are we going to um, see you on Broadway maybe in the future? if they'll have me look what the thing i have taken away thus far is that the people who love theater and who do this for a career um and who can do eight shows a week whether they're in the ensemble or a lead or a swing i don't know how people do it Mm. people like you have to really love it i think a lot of the time it's a really thankless thing because it is sort of like the engine that could it's not like you get a tv show and there's they're throwing tons of money at you and you work a couple days a week um these people are so so talented and work so hard and it's amazing to see like everybody's abilities i, I really am, i brought my sister to rehearsal yesterday because you know like you said, i can be self-deprecating and you're very self-deprecating <laughs> yes but 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 there is a difference when it's I'm also just, <laughs> I'm critical. I'm pretty judgmental of like, my dream is to be, you know, like a Simon Cowell on one of those shows and just judge people. But I can be objective about the situations. And and I've told her for years, I'm like, you don't understand. Theater people are a different breed. The, the speed at which they can learn their technique, like everything is unmatched. And she came to the rehearsal yesterday. She's like, I see what you're saying. I'm like, yes. I'm like, yeah. It's incredible to see what these people can do. And it's like, I'm, I'm doing my best <laughs> and I'm really enjoying it. And I think I'm like, uh, this is a, a, a character that is, I can like thrive in and I love doing this, but it's also like, and it fits my voice well. So like, I think that's all great. Um, but just seeing how people come in and show up and I'm like, how do you place that vowel sound there? I'm not formally trained like a lot of these people. And I'm just like, this is amazing. Mm. I'm just a fan. And so I think what I'm taking away really is just like the amount of respect that I, you know, and I, you can't I think in TV and film, um, that's not to say people don't work their asses off. But there can be, I think, a lot more happy accidents. Yeah. Where I think in, in theater, there's much less of that. And I would love to do more theater. It definitely has ignited that bug in me and happy to like work hard to, you know, earn um, my spot there. It's so funny as like human beings, particularly in your case, how we can be so self-critical, but you also... What I love about you is you celebrate your ensemble so so often with the mm. different projects that you that you've done. I, um, you know, one of the most exciting things about theater too is that you never know who's going to be in the audience. And this is a question that we love mm-hmm. to ask people. But like outside of Beyonce and Ariana, is there anybody <laughs> that you're hoping will be in attendance during this run? I mean, we're going to be in DC, so if we can get some of those politicians in there, I would. Love it. Like Elizabeth Warren was a teacher. This whole thing's about education. Like, come on down. Come watch. They work so hard. They put up with so much shit. <laughs> like, come laugh and I'm cry for, for yeah. an hour and a half. You know, like, I think can we get the first lady? I, you know, I'm not asking, <laughs> just asking for the first lady. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would. I mean, I love politics. So if there's politicians or any of the like, news anchors or anything, like, would love it. Good for you too for using your platform to to build awareness in this crazy world that we're living in right now. I got one final oh, question scared. for you. 
Less than a month I, until the election. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's like, I'm ready for it to be over, but I'm also terrified. Yeah, same. I got a one final question for you, but you know, it's been five years since we got your debut EP. Are we <laughs> going to get some more music in the future? And I also think because you released this project during kind of the start of the pandemic, both you and mm-hmm. Austin have not been able to like do a proper tour for these projects. Is that something that's in the books for the future? I I don't know. Um, Austin's definitely going to keep making more music. Um, I, I get the bug every once in a while. So maybe. I wouldn't say no. I would say there's pro- probably at some point maybe a little more music. <laughs>